It's the most beautiful place in the world. We have everything that we need to make a good, easygoing, peaceful, as well as productive life here in the valley. I'm an uh, outfitter and guide for Teton Valley Lodge and uh, grew up here on this spot in Teton Valley. Well, the Teton River to me personally and to our family it means uh, a tremendous amount. There's just something special about it. It's just a magic place. So you can go all over the world and catch great fish, big fish, maybe even bigger fish than here. But to have day in and day out the dry fly fishing you have on this river, there's very few places in the world that have that. So it's really special. I'm the fourth generation here from my family and we have been farming ever since. My great grandma was born here in the valley. We've raised beef cattle my whole life. The land and the Teton River is basically the life source of what I do. Without the land, the water, the river, um, I can't exist. I love the, the family life of it. I think this is where, where we were supposed to be and what we were supposed to be doing and it's a huge benefit to me to, to be able to carry on that legacy that my great grandpa started. I mean, we've been farming potatoes in this valley for almost 100 years and that, it just, uh, it makes me feel proud and gives me purpose. The water is the lifeblood of the valley. You know, whether you moved here to be a fisherman, whether you moved here just for the tourist aspects, just for the snowpack, you know, so you go skiing or snowmobiling. Everybody that moves here, they all drill a well, they all love the clean water they can pull out of the ground. Without water, without clean water, my farm would dry up, my crops wouldn't grow. So the protection of the water is the biggest thing that needs to happen in our valley. In my lifetime, so there's been quite a few changes in the river and to the valley, Teton Valley, you know. Land uses are different and attitudes, demographic. There's a lot more pressure, you know, a lot more people and different types of recreation. Some of our biggest concerns at this point, um, rising temperatures and declining flows, in some cases even causing uh, fish fatalities. At the same time, we're also seeing our aquifer that all of us depend on in this valley for drinking water, we're seeing that decline. We've heard reports of individual private wells going dry. Um, people don't have drinking water anymore. One of the other threats that we're facing is that as uh, we see more and more development pressure, we're losing agricultural land rapidly. When we lose agriculture, we lose the ability to intentionally manage water. Teton Valley has this unique underground reservoir that's natural to the area. There's a lot more water being taken out of it right now. So we have to be able to figure out how to put that water back in there. With the old irrigation practices, lots of that water was stored. And so these wetlands were great habitat for birds and for terrestrial animals between the farmland and the river. And since all the pipelines went in, the locals have noticed these wetlands have begun to get drier earlier in the season. And this is an effort then to restore the flow to those wetlands, keep them wetter, greener, longer in the year. We need to sink that water up here in the highlands, you know, as close to the mountains as we can, because then it takes longer to get out of the valley, disperse that big stream flow that's coming out in the spring disperse it out, slow it down, and then it's there for everybody. I mean, even as far away as Washington and the salmon. If those of us in the highlands can make it happen and put water into the ground, it's gonna help all of us all the way down. This valley without the ability to manage water the way that family farmers and ranchers have done for generations would look really different. We would take a huge economic hit People come here because they love this river. If we lose that, we lose a significant portion of our economy. We lose a lot of what most of us came here for. Through this aquifer recharge project, we can set that time clock back a little bit. We can recharge that underground reservoir and allow that water to slowly trickle out from the ground into the river, into our creeks, 
at the time when it's needed most for agriculture and for fish. With the ability to have FTR bring all the, the science into what us farmers want to do, plus be able to supply the manpower to do it during the summer when we need to do it, it's a win-win for everybody. I can see now like gathering the data and figuring it out has brought a lot of benefit to um, the projects that are happening now and have been happening and the, you know the proofs in the pudding you see the numbers of the fish and the quality of the hatches on the river and the quality of the water and it's you know there's no denying it it's 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 working the friends of the teton river have been a very crucial asset for the whole recharge programs we have a common goal a common goal is water environmentalists and farmers are actually working together that's something that usually doesn't happen we need to be kind and you know embrace differences change all that kind of stuff it's going to happen it's, it's going to happen let's make it happen correctly and let's write our own destiny